music has no borders. Borders are artificial. Music is also the only language that everybody understands, you know, and it doesn't need translation. I went into music because I loved it from infancy. And when I picked up the trumpet, I didn't have in my mind seeking fame, you know, changing anything. I just loved music. And weekends were like carnivals, and there were big bands, and there were combos and singing contests. There was no television, so we had street songs as kids. And the church, our versions of church songs were just once wonderful. And then the political rallies, everything is done with music in South Africa. If you love music, you were like a pig in mud. I was like a pig in mud. But I came from a people who were oppressed and who were fighting oppression. Everybody I talk to, including Dabo Mbeki, the second president, who remembers him as a young man, and they were all filled with praise for what not only, not only what, how Huey had developed as a musician, but also for the very active role he played in helping to end apartheid in South Africa. The heroes of South Africa really are the people who face the guns and the tanks and, uh, and sacrifice their lives uh, for us to be free today. I think those are the people that should be praised and we don't hear too much about them. Uh, we hear about bums like Masekela instead. <laughs> Allowed to listen to like the like by you and all those guys that were in exile. Then we were actually allowed to listen to their music, like the Letter Bulas and the Kaifa Simingas and those things. So that really changed in allowing us to actually listen to our people, our own music. I am personally very uh, obsessed with heritage restoration. I think that they have to like turn their mindset away from uh, what religion manipulated them into thinking that their heritage was backward and barbaric and primitive and heathen and pagan. And uh, yet it's like uh, probably the richest diversity of styles and culture and pageantry. And it's just time to wake up and say, listen, let's show our shit off. We did, for instance, a, a, a play, a musical, with a cast of 14 young people. It's called Songs of Migration. It's an example of a start going back and showing the excellence of the past. We came here as a young student looking to take advantage of opportunities here in America. And I helped uh, fund him and get him into the Manhattan School of Music. And uh, when he got through with that, I helped get him in the union. He helped me to go to school and gave me my first part-time job. So he's more than somebody I collaborated. And to a certain extent, he's a foster father. There's a very, very specific style to the way Huey plays that is instantly identifiable. And it is very much indigenous to a, a, a South African melodic harmonic sound. There was a time when you could hear Louis Armstrong, or you could hear Miles Davis. These artists develop a sound that was uniquely theirs. And I think he recaptured that very much in his own music. Musically, he's a legend. I know he's come back from the, the Miles Davis and all those guys. He's been back in that Dizzy Gillespie, and that's a, he can play that style of music. But the local thing that he does, he's made it his, you know, he's got a unique sound. I have a conservatory background because I went to Manhattan School of Music, 
where orchestra for instrumentalists was compulsory and brass ensemble was compulsory and even like singing in the chorus for opera was compulsory. We did it at the request of the London Symphony Orchestra with a 250 voice community choir. Music is about collaboration. You know, people who like build perimeters for themselves are losing out on a lot. I'm very proud of you, and I think he is as unique to South Africa as any great American jazz musician is to America. It's such a joy to see how people respond to his music. It's like, wow, you know? And I'm honored to be part of it. When people leave their homes, they get babysitters, they buy tickets, they come from afar. They're hoping to get a good feeling. And it's our duty to make them feel good. And wherever we go in the world, that's what we do. And like, if they're happy, it makes us feel happy. It makes us feel good. Because there's no better gift than to receive the joy that they gave us. And uh, we have to give it in return.